Good afternoon, everybody. I'm John Colucci. I'm Vice President of Sales and Marketing with Westchester Modular Homes, and I'm here today with Paul Scalzo and Joe Enright of Westchester Modular Homes of Fairfield yeah. County, one of our model home builders over here in the uh, wonderful state of Connecticut, and they also service Massachusetts. So welcome, guys. Thank you, Thanks John. For Absolutely. Um, today, we wanted to chat a little bit about what's going on with financing. We hear about interest rates going up and what the Fed's doing and how how it's affected the market. So uh, we have Tom Coronado, who is with the Federal Savings Bank, and Tom is known as one of the professionals in our modular world that uh, deals with financing all the time. Uh, Tom's been in the business for quite some time. So Tom, we're uh, happy to have you join us today, and we just wanted to chat with you a little bit about what's going on, what's what's happening with customers, what's happening with rates, what's happening with applications. What what are you seeing out in the marketplace? Well, thanks for having me. Um, you know, and, and uh, you know, hope to kind of provide you guys some insight. I mean, we're. It, it's definitely a changing market. It's been changing for months. Uh, it's definitely changed over the last year. Um, you know, I think they are seeing a decline in, in application volume in the regular purchase market. Uh, some of that has to do with um, inventory. And, you know, again, being more in a national spotlight that I'm in, I kind of have my finger on the pulse in, in various areas. Um, and it, so it's not a, a, a global thing. It's kind of more of like a, a local you know, kind of you know, way of weighing things. But, you know, I think reading the data that's out there from the NAHB and other sources, uh, we're seeing um, that construction is still strong. It's still the alternative. I think people have come to accept that rates are no longer 2 and 3%, but they're 6 and 7%. They may continue to increase for a little while. Um, but, you know, the folks that are kind of out there are, you know, you have to kind of come to the, realization that you're going to marry the house and date the rate and you know that's where my job comes into play to kind of go over the mathematics today and say hey this is your payment but then if we do see a refinance boom when rates decline and they are cyclical then we look at here's where your rate will be at x y or z rate when it declines and refinancing is not a complicated process so got it so, you know, one of the things, obviously, since the pandemic we've run into is obviously the uh, the cost of building homes today, not just from the factory's perspective, but, you know, Paul and Joe are faced with rising costs and rising material, rising labor costs on site, doing the uh, doing the site work and the finish work on the units. And now we've got, now we're kind of trumped by having the higher interest rate. So, you know, the first thing we do when we talk to a client is advise them to, uh, call somebody like yourself to be pre-qualified and understand what their budgets are. So when a, when a customer reaches out to you, what, uh, what, what kind of, what steps do you take them through on the finance end? Well, again, in, in my world, uh, certainly for system built homes, you know, what we kind of do is at least get them familiar with the terminologies that are different from a standard stick built site built home. Um, my, my particular kind of approach is kind of ask the probing questions, you know, kind of get them familiar with the mathematical gymnastics of the loan, which technically is going to be the same, no matter what, whether they're purchasing existing or they're going to be building the, you know, the, the, the math is the same, but there's no really magic wand in new construction or existing, but try to get them just focused with the builder, um, and, you know, really just get them to the point of, you know, what do I do next? And I, I usually recommend like a full bone pre-approval, uh, have the ability to do a soft credit pull so it doesn't really affect their credit score and get them just, even if they know they're qualified, well, let's have the blank kind of select it with a pre-approval of the math. So that this way they can go back to the builder, back to the site folks, you know, back to the manufacturer and say, yeah, I'm ready to kind of really negotiate because I know the bank piece is behind it. And then, you know, kind of further let them know, like from that point, they kind of conduct the dance because the next piece is sign a contract, execute it, get plans, inspection, architectural drawings, 
have the builder do a site visit maybe to make sure that their excavation costs are where they're going to be or if it's a tear down or whatever it might be but really kind of explain to them and then you know additionally you know a lot of folks think that they could just go to any bank any lender and it's not the case as we know some manufacturers some parts of these you know homes that are system built you know or modular um there's kind of requirements for each factory or manufacturer as far as how the curbside delivery is handled is there an assignment of funds letter you know is you know when are we paying are we paying pre-curbside what kind of deposits need to go out when they need to go out um and you know uh, in the last three months of my kind of searching for you know kind of test driving different you know kind of arenas in the banking world um finding out that some of the banks out there don't even control their own draws, which means that the builder experience isn't going to be good. When the builder experience isn't good, then the borrower experience isn't good. And ultimately that means the manufacturing piece isn't good. Even though it's a great kind of transaction, they just kind of feel that it was laborious and they may recommend to their friends not to build. So we kind of have to get them comfortable that this is not a regular purchase although it may feel that way because there's a complexity to the loan process that we kind of partner in with the builder and manufacturer to kind of make it smoother. Right. Got it. So great advice because obviously, you know, um, the old adage, money makes the world go round, right? So we got to make sure that the customer can afford uh, the house, uh, afford the financing rather, uh, to build a new home. So that's, that's really great advice for a great starting point to have them not just pre-qualified, but actually get into the loan process. Uh, tell us a little bit about your program when it comes to modular. So the, in my world for modular, uh, a lot of things have changed. Um, the federal savings bank has kind of embraced, uh, building as one of their core principles and mission. Um, statements like first time home buyer and veterans are kind of very near and dear to the company. But kind of number three, I think they gave me four to be honest with you. And a number three was construction, which kind of got my attention. And I think I stopped listening, so I don't know what number four is. But <laughs> uh, you know, they'll they'll allow for you know VA construction loans, FHA. So you got a lot of first time opportunity. Uh, they'll allow for first and second home builds. So again, you get the you know, the, the move up buyer, you've got the, you know, legacy home builders. Um, they even, you know, recognize that there's opportunity in that um, one to four unit multifamily. Uh, you know, they, they really kind of embrace um, the, the, like say the, the more expedient build and the efficient building of system built. So modular is that, right? I mean, you have less hands in the pie, you have a controlled build in a factory, you don't have weather related issues. Uh, you've got the energy efficiencies and things of that nature, but they've also expanded into renovation. So when it's a teardown or if it's a fire, you know, uh, affected home or if it's a, like a, a rebuild, um, they're, they're really going into like this, like kind of attacking everything, including uh, ADUs, which is something I didn't have a chance to ever talk about in the past. But, you know, again, if it's common to the area, it, uh, ultimately that's what they're looking for is, the appraiser to comment and say, look, is, is this a white elephant in the middle of the woods or is this actually, you know, something that's common to certain markets? And, um, you know, again, they, they, I'm the unicorn that's out there in the modular space. Uh, and a lot of folks are saying, I, I didn't even know, you know, loan officers or banks were looking for this type, but this is the future of building because as we know, the ultimate issue with all industries is labor. And, you know, the manufacturer, you guys are figuring out how to solve that by having it done in one location. Um, and again, kind of coupling with the bank. So it's been very, very good to work with these guys to kind of look at. And they're constantly kind of looking for, like, what space are they missing in construction? So, like, USDA or, or land loans and things like that, they're, they're kind of looking at. And um, they even have some commercial options, although, uh, to be honest with you, I haven't quite got it that It's not my forte. So, but... Um, yeah, I'm going to jump in. Um, I think it's great that you kind of, you understand what we do as authorized builder for the factory time in and time again, we're, we're training banks and a lot of the banks 
can't do the construction draws the way they, they needed. We're experiencing that right now. You had all the buzzwords that we deal with, assignment of funds and things like that, that protect the factory when they're building a home. So it's nice to hear you say all these things. Um, unfortunately, sometimes what happens is people have relationships with banks and they want to do business with their lender, which is fine. We always um, will do that with them, but we wind up having issues. Um, which we do, we have issues daily with some of the banks because we have to train them. They don't know what an assignment fund is. Funds are, they've never done one. They don't know about the factory being an ESOP and when the house has to be paid for and things like that. So I'm just glad to hear you say all those things, Tom. You know exactly what's going on. And to your point of uh, factory built modular homes, it seems to me every stick builder that I talk to is trying to buy from our factory because we complete our houses, we don't start them, and then wind up having things that are back ordered and not finished. So we're getting the houses done on time. Factory doesn't start till they have all the product in house, and we're very efficient with that. So anyhow, that's that's what I think of what you're saying. Yeah, I, I mean, and, and again, a lot of the factory went through the growth issue of COVID, right? I mean, we all had supply line issues. Um, so, you know, a lot of the factories in the beginning, you know, I guess we kind of all got caught with our pants down a little bit where, you know, even the banks didn't know how long will these loans last and be on the books. But, you know, I think the, the, the resolution and the solving of the um, COVID was, you know, wait to get all the materials, then start building a house so we don't have things sitting in the yard. Um, but, um you know, my understanding from talking to several banks and bankers is a lot of the COVID delays are kind of gone and the draw process to the builder has been more efficient because everything's moving again. There was a, a, a low of like, it was just log jam. And, you know, the, and again, for the bank, for the manufacturer, for the site guy. Um, and I think that's why housing starts were kind of up year over year, according to the NEHB. So um, yeah. at least for July, you know. There is one positive point that we have is we don't have labor inflation at the factory. So some of the stick builders, when they go to get their product finally delivered and installed, um, are finding they have labor inflation, not so much material inflation. And it's huge right now what's going on, at least in our area. We're out of New York, 60 miles out of New York, we're seeing labor inflation, um, you know, significantly. And that labor inflation is really coming from the fact that there's not a whole lot of labor out there. So... You know, it's the old supply and demand theory, but, uh, you know, we're fortunate enough in the factory to have a built-in labor force, and a lot of that I attribute to us being an ESOP. Uh, when you're employee-owned, uh, we, we don't have the turnover that mm -hmm. you would normally have somewhere else, and uh, we can control the cost. So I had a question. Um, you know, obviously, we deal with 90 of our, 90 to almost 100% of our loans are construction loans. But what's happening now is a lot of our clients are coming to us and with the, the costs going up or whatever they are, they're kind of short. They're basically cash buyers, but now they're short. So it almost seems it's, it seems to be a lot to go through a construction mortgage to, to come up with 20% of the build or something like that. So do you have programs that would work for us as a builder and for the client that is basically like an end loan that's guaranteed and lined up that can be in place we do our prod, we do the project, we get a CO and it closes and we're funded. Or is that something that we still would have to do a construction mortgage with? So, you know, generally speaking, that is kind of the pre-qualification conversation that I have with folks. So whether they need money or not, you know, the, the short answer is, yeah, there's, there's tons of opportunity. Um, you know, my particular bank has, you know, unsecured loans up to $50,000 for qualified buyers where they can just flat out lend the money for, cost overruns or you know i could use it as a kind of like a line of credit or i could use it for anything and you know like it, it's still a little shocking to me at times when i kind of look at some of the product suite that's out there but in the general world and again you know depending if i'm answering everything correctly yeah you could write a loan with a longer commitment you know again if you know the client only need a hundred thousand you can kind of just get them pre-qualified so there's a takeout we could wring the risk out of the loan by, you know, kind of clearing all the conditions so that, you know, if you're going to the kind of the final mode, you know that there is a, a competitive loan prepared for these folks. Um, some cases there's extended lock periods where, you know, I've seen, you know, banks or, you know, bankers or, you know, uh, where they can lock for 
180 days or 360 days and kind of guarantee the rate against the increasing rate market. Um, you know, if they had to park your residences, there's home equity lines of credit that you could kind of do. There's bridge loans. And this is all stuff that's out there. And, and it's kind of identifying that in the beginning. Um, you know, we want to take, or I want to take a path of least resistance with the client because, you know, if they have a departure residence with a ton of equity, you know, sometimes cash out refinance to get them the cash to make them a cash buyer for you uh, is the best thing. Um, so the timing wise, is the timing about the same for construction mortgage or something like you're talking about? Because if it is, then I you know why even go down that road. But if it's definitely a lot faster, a lot, you know, you know, easier uh, process, that's kind of the question. I mean, like, you know, loans yeah. close in 30 to 60 days, you know, like, yeah, we can get out there and close something in 10 to 15 days, but like, who wants to advertise that? Yep. Um, you know, co- construction loans are more complex. Mm-hmm. So it's about customer experience and you don't want to get them lost in the sauce because either the, the loan officer or the bank or someone's kind of confusing the situation. Um, you know, these folks come to us in, you know, in the modular world. And as you guys had said, the banks don't understand modular to begin with and they confuse us with other types of building quite frequently which is not the case you know modular is just a method of construction and as opposed to manufacturing which is a type of construction so you kind of have to get out there and get in front of it and say okay what is going to be the best path i mean some of the clients we have is we know based on the economy they're they're cash heavy so maybe they don't get a bank loan at all. Like I'm in a business to get bank loans, but I'm in a business to solve my friends or my relationships problems, which is how do we get a build going? And if they're sitting on a million dollars with another company, if they could take a line or a loan against that, maybe that's the quick and dirty, easy answer mm-hmm. that they take a loan against assets. They don't even deal with the construction piece. And I just line them up for once we talk to their financial planner, how do you want to structure the permanent loan once you've made the move? So you kind of have to, have that kind of comfortability there's a relationship although it's with the client it's also with the builder and everything leads to referrals right so if we're giving them the right information up front then we're giving them the right expectation of the process and then when you build it if the process is as we described then they refer us again so it doesn't always mean that i have to win the loan but i have to win the relationships that are around the loan so Okay. So it is a complicated process. And, and listen, my advice to any customer that's looking for this, if you're looking to build a new home, um, hopefully with modular, that uh, Tom, we've got your information up on our screen with your contact information now. Um, feel free to give Tom a call. And again, we recommend that you speak to a bank before you get too deep into the process to understand exactly what the financing looks like, what kind of cash you might need to come up with up front, and and what your comfort level is for that uh, for that payment on a monthly basis, and that kind of sets the stage for budgeting the construction of the house and the kind of house and the options that you're looking for in the house, um, including the site work. Tom, we appreciate you joining us today. <clears throat> Thank you, Tom. Tom, Thank thanks a million. Yeah. And uh, folks, again, uh, we're giving you that resource. Tom Coronado, a specialist in the modular financing world. And uh, we hope you'll take advantage. Thanks for joining today.